And so, at long last, the taxi funtas debacle is finally over. Um, yeah. And it ends with, uh, basically a confirmation of something that pretty much you already knew. They weren't going to find anything. The league was never going to find anything. Major League Soccer was never, ever going to find anything that they could nail Taxi with. Because Taxi did not say what he was accused of saying. Uh, the findings came out. Uh, they finally, uh, after almost two months, MLS released a statement. They said uh, that they couldn't find anything. They that everything was inconclusive. So now I'm gonna tell you why I hate this finding, right? Some of you uh, on my Twitter page might have seen the analysis that I made a while ago. Uh, to I made the analogy of how this resembles what happened on BYU's campus with Duke University volleyball player Rachel Richardson, right? And essentially, and basically, the ex almost the exact same situation happened where Rachel Richardson uh, said that that said that she had been uh, that she was heckled by some racist guys uh, at her last volleyball game and on BYU's campus. BYU went crazy trying to prove you know, it went crazy and immediately like excommunicated. You know, who just random people. Uh, the school's police department investigated, reviewed the tapes, and said they found nothing. Uh, and the school of, that is Brigham Young, BYU, uh, eventually apologized to the students that they had uh, excommunicated uh, and, you know, reinstated them, did everything they had to do uh, to bring some type of restorative justice. <laughs> what I didn't talk about, though, or what I may not have spoken about much, was what Duke University did. You see, because Duke knew, Duke had the same information, but Duke University instead decided to uh, punt. They, 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 didn't, they didn't say there was nothing in their statement. From what I remember, there was nothing in their statement that said anything about how relieved they were that the findings found that, 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 the, that the findings were that nobody said the that, that nobody had called Rachel Richardson any nasty race, racist names. None of that. It was just the usual woke virtue signaling of, well, we as a school stand devoted to, to, uh, to ending racism in all of its forms and creating a safe space for all. And I'm like, you don't have to do that. That was the thing that bothered me the whole time as I'm watching this. As I watch this whole all unfold, as I, as you know, like they didn't, the like Duke University, instead of instead of showing a little bit of moral character and a little bit of moral courage, they decided to just hand wave everything and say, "Well, we believe Rachel Richardson, regardless of the." In spite of the evidence showing otherwise, 
uh, that something wasn't said and, you know, some lived experience and blah, 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 whatever other cultural neo-Marxist bullshit that they, uh, that they, you know, whatever they, whatever they believe in now. So basically, MLS and DC United decided to become, decided to be Duke University. Both of them decided to be Duke University. I despise the fact that, I despise and I actually condemn the fact that Major League Soccer decided to leave, decided to uh, confirm, yet not confirm, Taxi's innocence uh, in that statement. And um, if you uh, if you if you want to read the statement, I, I haven't, I don't have the uh, statement right here in front of me, but I have posted it. And it's going to be my pinned tweet on Twitter uh, when you you know at, uh, at the time that this uh, this video gets uh, gets released gets released or well, published rather. But I'm pissed. I'm pissed about this because, again, this entire situation shows the cowardice of Major League Soccer as a league and just how much, oh, like, just how much power these institutions like black these these uh, organizations within MLS how much power they have it's actually too much this whole situation kind of it, it awakened me to something that i had not realized before which is the current crop of people in sports and in liberal media, in, in, in certain areas that are considered liberal, right? Soccer, sports in general, really. Um, liberal politics um, and, you know, academia and stuff like that. What I'm learning throughout all of this is just how deathly afraid these institutions have become of doing anything concrete that these little bastards that any that, they, that these little bastards can use against them to call them racist it is clear to me that these people wake up every morning, these people go to bed at night and have nightmares about being called or judged as racists. And the only reason why they've done this is because, uh, the only reason why this is the case is because these, these organizations have too much power. There's way too much power. Social power, that is. There is too much social currency in being a victim. And this entire situation has shown me that what is needed is a return to some type of moral courage. How much courage would it have taken, honestly, how much courage would it have taken the league, the disciplinary committee, black players for change? How much moral courage would it have taken to simply say we are we we, we accept the findings of we accept the findings of the investigation. We are relieved that Nothing, we are relieved that nothing was found. We are, we will continue to work towards creating a diverse and 
non and, and anti racist, like whatever other fuck shit you want that they, they wanted to say. How much courage would it have taken to just simply go, Taxi didn't do it. We're relieved that nothing was found. We thank Mr. Funtas for his uh, uh, for his cooperation in this matter, which DC United as a club did to their credit. They did thank him. Uh, they did acknowledge his uh, his cooperation uh, with it, you know, with, with, with within this matter, which was good, I guess. Um, but I, I I fail to understand, like. How hard would that have been to just simply go, okay, to, to mean like how simple of a, like, like seriously, it's like they overcomplicated this. And this is why the moral courage, the, the, the moral courage, again, that's, that's what's enraging me so much about this. This could have been, this whole situation could have been and should have been over in a weekend. As soon as as soon as Elfath, your MLS 2022 referee of the year, as soon as your award winning referee of the year said we reviewed everything and we didn't find nothing. That should have been the end of it. Should have been the end of it. Sorry. And honestly, I feel sick for Taxi. I feel awful for him. Because he didn't have to go through all of this. Two months Two months almost of an investigation? Two months. And meanwhile, uh, Santiago Sosa and Cucho Hernandez, their investigations took all of a week individually? You mean, so, so basically, so basically what this also says, and this is, Another part of this, it's easier for these people to condemn and to punish. And the punishment becomes more severe when they have the proof on their side. In other words, they these wokes within Major League Soccer are ill-equipped. They are ill-equipped to confront their to confront these woke supporters with the truth. Show simply say you're relieved. You're thankful that you didn't that, that nothing was found. It's a very simple process. This was over complicated. It should never it should not never have been this way. It should never have been this way. But unfortunately, it was, and we now have to deal with it. Or, well, really, now we have to learn from it. And I certainly have learned a lot from this situation. The second thing I've learned throughout this whole matter is yes, DC United supporter culture, the supporters groups, and yes, I am going to speak directly to Screaming Eagles, Rose Room Collective, District Ultras, La Banda, 202 Unique, and anyone else who... Uh, Anyone else who calls uh, the Chico stand their property. (sighs) 
You people are the most disgusting, traitorous, judgmental assholes I have ever seen. Every single one of these supporters groups are traitorous. They are, they, they're, they're, you're, you people, you people out woked yourselves. You out woked yourselves. You stood with the accuser thinking that you were going to be uh, seen to be on the right side of history, I guess, or on the right side of this situation. And in so doing, you stood against DC United. This is supposed to be the crest that we bleed for, right? You stood against our best player. You were willing to feed our best player to the wolves. You were ready to throw that man overboard. You were ready to throw Taxi Funtas overboard because you people wanted to appear to be the most sanctimonious and the most virtuous of all of, of anybody within DC United supporter culture. You stood against our best player. You did not, you refused to defend him. You refused to stand by him when he needed us as supporters. You knew that man was, was trying to overcome whatever fucking baggage he had at Rapid Vienna. And you know that man worked his ass off this past season, losing effort notwithstanding. There's a special place in hell for hypocrites like you. There's a special place in hell for people who use every single opportunity to appear to be more virtuous and upstanding and morally upright than everybody else. There's a special place in hell for hypocrites and liars and frauds and people who think they're better than everybody just because of their political stance. Your politics are shit. Your desire to be seen as these great and holy and wonderful and righteous people is shit. How dare you call yourselves fans of the black and red? How dare you call yourselves supporters section? Supporters groups. This whole entire time, you had people like district. You had you had guys like district ultras who decided, you know, in the in the interim to try to get uh, to try to get general admission prices into the in, in, for the Chico stand. You try to get them at season ticket member rates. Well, I'm a season ticket member, god damn it, and I say I don't want you assholes to get anything. A bunch of white guys, a bunch of white progressive, a bunch of white leftists who think that they who think they speak for everybody so that you assholes can get cheaper tickets for yourselves and for your boys uh, and, and, and for your boys in Northern Virginia or wherever the fuck you people live. I have never been more disgusted in my life at the toxicity, at the absolute toxicity of this, of, of the supporter culture with DC United. 
It is disturbing. It is disturbing. I didn't think the 2022 season could be any could 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 get any worse. I don't think the toxicity I could I don't think I never thought the toxicity that I witnessed this year from the supporter section, from the Chico staff, and from and from the fucking commentariat. And I'll get to them in a second. <coughs> I wish you got, I so wish if DC United, if the front office, if the front office grew a spine and said, get the fuck out to every single one of you people, to every single one of you fat, fake, uh, uh, St. Pauli wannabes, you fraudulent St. Pauli wannabes, this ain't Germany, you dickheads. This ain't a communist country yet. We're not even socialist yet. And you people, you people with your fucking demands, you deserve nothing else. It is absolutely disgusting. Your fucked up TFOs. Your little half-assed tifos that that you you you, 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 you that, that, that that barely even commit that barely even convey a co a coherent message to the front office. Your constant stance is against the players. The way you freaks talk talk shit about Ravel Morrison. And you trying to dissect that black man's life and his fucking past. You tried to turn, you tried, you, you, you motherfuckers tried to turn Ravel Morrison's life inside out. Fucking around with you people. Asking, well, we need to have a conversation. No, we don't. And we never did. The only people who wanted to have a conversation about Ravel Morris's past were you. I realize I've gone a little bit over the top with this, but you know what? I, I am I'm so angry about this. I don't I, I don't think I've been I've actually gotten angrier about this situation the longer it's gone on. And yes, my anger at the supporters groups is now well, I am now well within my right to say, fuck District Ultras, fuck La Banda, fuck Screaming Eagles, fuck 202 Unique, and fuck Rose Room Collective. Sideways. You're traitors. You have no business in the Chico stand. You have no business in Audi Field. Take your St. Pauli shit elsewhere. Take your wannabe St. Pauli shit. Leave that out in Northern Virginia. That's where most of y'all are. That's where most of you people live anyway. To the front office. And I'm going to tread somewhat lightly here. I'm going to be a little bit more diplomatic to the front office. Because I realize that you were put in this position by the league. You were put in this position by the league. I recognize that and I, and I, and I understand that. The roster moves we were supposed to, you know, you guys were supposed to put out. Uh, that probably would have been put out by now, uh, barring the uh, firing of Lucy Rushton and um, uh, a couple others within the you know the, the shakeup within the front office that took place a couple of weeks ago. I get there's a lot going on, right? And I know that several of you. 
You don't have to say anything. You can't say anything. But for the most part, you know I'm right. You know I've been right about everything. You know I've been right about Taxi. You knew that I was right about the way that these the way that these fans treated Ravel Morrison. Granted, I'm I don't know. Granted, I'm no good at at soccer analysis yet in terms of stuff on the field, stuff on the pitch. And clearly, you guys have like you guys have Wayne Rooney and. And uh, Pete Shuttleworth and 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 Fred Briant, Briant shout to him, mon frère. Uh, but I am. I think the front office did what they had to do in this case. So now that the investigation is over, and. You have acknowledged taxis. Um, you've acknowledged taxis' uh, cooperation in this matter. I think it's now time for you, as a club, and this is not, and this is everybody. I'm talking front office. I'm talking coaching staff. I'm talking players. Everybody involved needs to put their arms around Taxi Funtas and welcome him home as a brother, as a battery mate, and as the best player on our team last year. Enough is enough. The investigation is over. The league said inconclusive. I say bullshit. Uh... That basically was uh, an exoneration. And it's as good as an exoneration as as apparently we're going to get. So we're going to roll with it. Taxi didn't do it. I said for I said for weeks now that Taxi didn't do it. But let me but I, I, I digress. This club, these players, and I'm calling on real Fans of this crest. Real fans of the black and red need to rally around, need to rally around our guy. Taxi's our guy. Now, I will tell you this. That man is well within his right to leave. He's well within his rights to go. He's worth about four point four million dollars on the transfer market. He can that that is a good deal for a fantastic striker. If we're gonna go back to the four three three, uh, then yes, I think it, then 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 that works out even better. But the fact remains, um, he, this club need this club and F, I am challenging this club, the front office. I'm challenging all of the players to rally behind Taxi Funtas. Do not sit up and let this guy because I'm telling you right now, he's well within his rights to walk. He's well within his rights to walk. That man don't have to stay in the black and red. He can leave. He's already gotten a taste of, of he's already gotten a taste of the of, of, of these turncoat fans, these turncoat supporters. He could walk, he, he could walk. And it would break my heart because that would mean that DC United are in an even deeper hole for 2023 than they really deserve to be. After three head coaches. Seven total win, seven wins on the season, and twenty-seven total points. It was a bad season. It was a bad, dysfunctional season. The worst we've had in our twenty-seven year history, honestly. And yes, worse than the three than the three win season in two thousand thirteen, where we won the U.S. Open Cup. We got a lot of changes that have to be made. There are a lot of that we have we have situations that have to be fixed 
And if taxi walks, which again, that man is in his right to do, it's going to cause some more problems. Problems that we don't need. Especially when we are not a respected club. Uh, we are not as respected as we were at one point. And we are a shell of what we of what we were in the first ten years of MLS and our and our club's existence. So that's it. I'm gonna be there for 2023. I'm gonna be there. And you're gonna have to see this face. Remember, bitch, you started this. You, you woke supporters groups started this. You caused this. And so I'm going to be on your ass forever. Y'all motherfuckers can no longer will no I refuse to sit back and wa and watch as you people get the opportunity get every opportunity to critique and be and not be critiqued that shit ends now it ends now and I and I will no longer tolerate this abusive foolishness from you from 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 the supporters groups and especially not from the commentariat either. RFK refugees and all these other ones, you guys suck. You suck as people. You suck as podcasters. You suck at life. Except for DC United Kingdom. I give I, I give a special ex exception to him because at least he had, at least he had the uh, moral character to see what was going on. Anyways, this now is a chapter we put behind us and hopefully Taxi will be here for 2023. Uh, we need him. We need to make a big push for 2023. So Vamos United now and always. Uh, and I'll probably put out another video specifically for Taxi. And I think he deserves it. I think he deserves it. That man put up with a lot of shit. One last thing. Because I, I had a conversation with somebody today who asked me why I cared so much about this. And I, and I I feel like I have to. This is this is the final. This is a good way to end things with this with this video. I care about this because I cared as much as I did about this because I think we have to because I I wanted to see some kind of moral courage from somebody anybody. When an allegation, when, when false allegations are levied against someone. I, I wanted to see that. Unfortunately, I didn't see that. I didn't see that from Major League Soccer. Out to DC United's credit, the club tried. The club tried to show a little bit of that when they, like I said, when they, when they, uh, when they, Acknowledged Taxi's uh, cooperation. But throughout all of this, there just was not any moral character shown. And I want, I, I think Taxi deserved better. Taxi deserved better from us as fans. Taxi deserved better from the club. Taxi deserved better. From uh from the league, and I'm not going to back down from that. I'm not afraid to stand up for what I believe is right, even when other people think I'm nuts for doing so, or other people think that I've got other that I have other things that I should focus on a little bit harder than this. Some things actually matter. Character matters. 
Standing up for what's right matters. No objective truth and decency matter more than anything in a world where my truth, my objective truth, has become the only truth that we're allowed to hold. The ability to see and know what's real is far more important than anything you could possibly imagine. And I fear that as a, as a society, we are losing that ability and we're losing it fast. We need to get back to objectivity. We need to get back to caring more about character than the color of our skin. That's supposed to matter the most. Anyways, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, and, and and one last thing before I go. Uh, DeAndre Yedlin is a lying bitch. Good night. <laughs>